السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين جزاك الله خير to everyone for joining us today on this wonderful evening uh, إن شاء الله we will be discussing uh, the fiqh of Ramadan so uh, الحمد لله الله سبحانه وتعالى has brought us this far into Shaban has given us life we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bring us into the month, month of Ramadan and to bless us uh, and shower us with his mercy in the month of Ramadan. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the dua that the Sahaba used to do, Allahumma balighna Ramadan. So the, the main uh, ayah that talks about Ramadan in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as siyam kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattakoon. That fasting has been prescribed on you, as well as prescribed on those before you, so that you may, submit to, so that you may attain taqwa. So how, how can we best attain taqwa? is through this month of Ramadan and how, how can we get best through this month of Ramadan whenever you want to do the best at something you have to know how to do it first you have to educate yourself and you have to teach yourself what are the best ways to do it so how can we do that through learning fiqh and learning what is the best way to fast and how, what, what can we do when we're fasting what can we not do there's lots of questions regarding the l legal rulings so inshallah uh, we're here today with uh, Sheikh Yusuf uh, inshallah he will enlighten us with this Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I very much appreciate this opportunity to be with you, brothers and sisters. Uh, Shaban, we are at the end of Shaban, and Ramadan is coming. Mubarak to you all. I am humbly trying to uh, avail myself for any Islamic uh, knowledge possible here in this community. I am very happy having this opportunity to try to answer some questions. Uh, we will ask you just uh, to begin with the uh, introduction of Ramadan. Uh, Ramadan is the month uh, of fasting. This is uh, really purification, uh, Tezkiya, and attaining Taqwa by physically joining uh, to the billions, billions of Muslims before us and today who are uh, really uh, controlling themselves away from doing imsak, away from eating and drinking and uh, uh, private relations a uh, whole day beginning maybe one and a half hour before sunrise up to sunset uh, as we do uh, siyam so this is one of the very important uh, duty muslims have to do it one of the five articles siyam that falls in the month of ramadan um, what is the youngest age for a child to fast first in Islam, mukallafiyyah, that is being fully responsible in terms of Islamic uh, law and Islam as a religion, being fully addressee of God, begins with puberty. That is physical, physiological thing for male boys, uh, like they would be able to uh, produce uh, semen, sperms, and girls able to get pregnant monthly cycles. So this differs from uh, climate to climate, from area to area. Uh, so about maybe 10 years, 11 years, but that is, there is no specific year or age, but something like teenagers can, uh, when they become able to uh, reach to puberty, what is called buluh in fiqh, that is the day they need, they are obliged to begin to fast. That is the day, that is the, the month or week, whatever we can call. So uh, some of the other questions, uh, a lot of them uh, regarded uh, eye, using eye drops or ear drops. general rule about these eye drops, ear drops, injection 
and everything general rule is is in Hanafis there are four mazhabs mazhabs have little differences of views in Hanafis anything reaches into Jawf Jim Wow Fa which means uh, stomach which means inner system of the body hollow in the body like blood system uh, like uh, stomach anything reaches over there breaks the fasting according to Hanafis whether it is Rida food or non Rida I know there are fatwas if there is non Rida not nourishing not something a part of food then they say it is allowed but Hanafis as no I know say that that is also is not something uh, allowed uh, so we need to ask our doctors specialized Abib Muslim has Muslim doctors that is the terminology used in fiqh eye drops ear drops whether it goes to mainstream of the body goes or not I am assuming generally eye drops or ear drops goes into mainstream mainstream of the uh, body I think but injections definitely goes because it goes to blood blood goes to the body to affect so according to Hanafis a fast a person who is fasting must not have them but if this is necessary medically Muslim doctors give fatwa then he or she is allowed not to fast make up later on if becomes well sometimes otherwise uh, then give fidya like fitra amount for that uh, that is the way out or the person may fast get injection or get uh, these uh, uh, eye drops ear drops uh, but uh, later on if he is Hanafi she is Hanafi definitely very much advisable to make that up if he or she gets well this is the way out so uh, Jof doesn't only include the stomach it's just inside the body that's a very good question in Arabic this is what is mentioned in folk book Jauf Jauf means like Ajwaf Ajwaf Wawi Ajwaf in grammar that means hollow inside the body like empty so when we apply that today's medical information there is uh, we don't say inside hollow inside the body what is meant meant stomach what is stomach because whatever goes to stomach it goes to other areas I am assuming or blood vessels and everything what is goes it goes hearts and everywhere that is what is meant Allahu A'lam because this is modern this is fiqhi term but modern science medicine gave us some details there is no empty part hollow or something in, in the body that means anything not staying on the skin like cream stays on the skin I mean small cream cream something like that on the on the skin does not go in like penetrating as opposed to injection done done on the vessels or or uh, whatever I mean different so this is what I can say so what about the uh, fidia can you explain a little bit more fidia is mentioned in Quran anybody who could not did not fa fast or cannot fast can give fidya fidya that is uh, like substitute fada in Arabic fadaya uh, comes from that root but it is same amount with fitra that is zakatul fitr 
in another terminology. What is that? Like certain amount of, of in Ramadan we give to poor people. That is same amount in this area, Dallas, Texas, last year we had like $11 dollars something for that. Possibly $11 for each day, but not faster. So that is fidia. What about uh, regarding uh, brushing, brushing the teeth? Or? First, I read here and there different uh, views, and uh, of course, one must be very cautious not to swallow anything. But brushing is good. Brushing is sunnah. But brushing is nothing wrong with that. Sometimes I read uh, toothpaste is no good or something like that. No, it is good. As long as we don't swallow faster, does not swallow down from his throat, everything is okay. We get wudu. We yeah. take water in our mouth, full water. When we are we to wash whole body, we like wash, we take water in, a, I mean, that doesn't break wudu. We can swim in the water. We swim and even die. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, it doesn't, what I am saying, anything, so brushing or anything we may have in our mouth, in fact, there are something, it is okay. Let me complete the sentence. Nothing wrong with that with tooth whether it is uh, sweet or taste, nothing, but we, we, toothpaste, but we must make sure we are not swallowing anything down. A woman can taste the food with her tongue, whether uh, salt is enough. If her husband is like a little sensitive, yeah. gets upset or something, <laughs> so look, she, while she is fasting, she is allowed to do that. Uh, to me, to my understanding, it is good and even better advised to brush with brush, with miswak, with uh, toothpaste, without toothpaste, but make sure the person fasting not, does not allow something goes down from his or her throat. What about uh, gargling? Same thing, gargling, same thing. That is, as long as we don't drink, we, do, don't, uh, we make sure it does not go down, it is totally okay. Anything above the throat is, is stays and we spit out, we clean, nothing wrong with that. So, uh, what about like uh, chewing, chewing gum or? <laughs> good, good. This is a little modern yeah. things. Uh, I wish somebody will not blame me. I think as long as a person does not swallow, definitely, I mean, having something in the mouth without swallowing, that without going into mainstream like absorbed by the different parts of the uh, mouth and uh, tongue and, uh, and going into mainstream, into Jehov, uh, that is, I cannot say it is haram. Of course, being cautious not to do something is different than fiqhi rule. You are asking fiqhi rule. So I think I cannot say it breaks haram. It breaks the fasting as long as not swallowed. But better to avoid it. Of course. We are, I mean, Fiqh is, is halal haram, what is allowed, what is not allowed issue. We are not speaking generally about better than the other, of course, better than the other to be paced. Yes.